Yesterday was World Hijab Day. I bet most of you didn't know because most average people don't give a shit. However, I figured it out because of this article posted on the CBC. You're invited to try on the hijab for World Hijab Day. There are booths at Windsor Regional Hospital where people can learn about the hijab. Maybe this goes without saying, but I don't think that it's the place of state-sponsored news organizations like the CBC to be promoting any particular religious viewpoint, not just Islam. I have yet to see an article inviting people to put on Christian crucifixes, hold Buddhist prayer beads, or wear those Jewish coffee filter looking hats. I, I don't know what they're called, I'm sorry. My point is, why is this a privilege reserved only for Islam? If there actually is a World Crucifix Day or whatever, I've never seen it. But you can bet your ass that World Hijab Day gets plastered all over social media when it hits. Windsor Regional Hospital is celebrating World Hijab Day, a day marked since 2013 to encourage women of all backgrounds to try on a hijab. The hospital's diversity committee will have booths set up at the Met and Ulet campuses, explaining why the hijab is worn and visitors will be invited to try one on. For those of you who don't know, the hijab is not actually just the headscarf. It's a full method of dressing modestly for one's Islamic religious convictions. Simply slapping a scarf over the hair of a non-believer is not hijab. And frankly, the reason why more Muslims probably aren't offended at the watering down of their religious practices in this way is because, unlike most other religions, Islam is just as much a political system as it is a spiritual one. And even its less-than-orthodox advancement serves that purpose. Both women started wearing the hijab at around 6th grade. The hijab is worn by women reaching sexual maturity in Islam. It's a symbol from the woman's father that she is ready to be married off and start a family. Grade 6 in Canada is around 11 years old. Maybe it's because these women are obviously Canadian, westernized Muslims, and so they might not know this. But wearing the hijab at 11 is the cultural variant of wearing makeup at 11. It's a social signal, recognizable by Muslim men, that the wearer is ready for sexual activity. And while the cynic in me wants to say that Muslims know exactly what they're doing when they advertise the sexual availability of children, I'm really hoping these two are just ignorant about their own religion. A lot of times we think about people being pressured to wear the hijab, but I think over here in Canada, the trend is actually people tell you not to wear it. I wonder why that is. I wonder why your average everyday Canadian sees the hijab as a symbol of brutal oppression, legitimate misogyny, and middle age era religious superstition. Maybe it's because in every Islamic country in the world, wearing the hijab is not a free choice, nor is it empowering, but instead it's state enforced on the entire population. Maybe it's because women who take off the hijab in Iran regularly get arrested. When I wear hijab, it's like I'm restricted, I'm oppressed, but when I don't wear hijab, it's like I'm free. I was moving uh, that white flag for five, six minutes, and the police car came and uh, they arrested me. Maybe it's because the Saudi Arabian guardianship program means that women can't do anything outside of the house without a male escort. Me and my sister escaped from Saudi Arabia to protect ourselves from getting trialed or committing apostasy from Islam, which is punished by death in my country. World Hijab Day is a, an insult to a lot of women who do not have the choice to take off their hijab in public, where they could get prison time, they could get beaten up by their own family members. I'm from Saudi Arabia and um, I am an atheist uh, Saudi woman who escaped to Canada two months uh, ago. There is a lot of uh, Saudi, uh, atheist Saudi women, but they, they can't speak because uh, the oppressed and Sharia law in uh, Saudi Arabia. One of the first most depressing days that I had on social media was learning that there was something called Hijab Day where free women would put this hijab on thinking that it makes them in solidarity with Muslim women. Maybe it's because Western women like you two, comfortably living in Canada, talking about the freedom to wear the hijab, provide ideological cover for repressive Islamist regimes to go on oppressing millions of women. Because you don't understand that the only reason you have the choice to wear the hijab or not is because of liberal democracy. If it were left solely up to Islam, you would not have the choice that you claim as empowering. And if the empowerment doesn't come from Islam, but exists in spite of it, then maybe your religion isn't empowering at all. And in fact, I think these women understand this to some degree. 
She said she's had to explain that it's so liberal in Canada that there's no pressure. So the fact that I am wearing it shows I'm doing it of my own will, she said, who feels wearing one is a representation of her true self. And that's fine. I'm actually okay with people wearing the hijab, or any clothing at all, really, in the public space, as long as it's not a safety risk, like you shouldn't be able to wear it during an ID photo, or in lieu of a helmet on a motorcycle or something. The same rules should apply to everyone regardless of faith. But if you're just going to the grocery store wearing the hijab, I don't care. But why does there need to be an initiative to encourage non-Muslim women to wear it? Well, that's a question that this article, inviting people to try the hijab on, never actually asks. The entire thing is just an advertisement for World Hijab Day, plus the personal reasons for these women for wearing it. Nothing about why the kafir should join in. The answer to that question, though, is rooted in that political side of Islam. The side that the religious and cultural aspects provide ideological cover for, in the same way that these Canadianized girls do. For example, in March 2018, UCLA held an open-air prayer session for the university's students. And this is what happened when somebody tried to record it. Allah. Uh, hi, I'm the president of this organization. I mean, are you with the media? Yeah. Uh, who are you? Allah. Excuse me. Allah. I'm the president of this organization. Uh, Chris. Allah. Chris, uh, if we, you can only start, you can only make video if you're with the media. I'm gonna have to call security on you unless you talk to me. I'm gonna call UCPD right now if you don't stop right now, and then delete it. How's it going? I hope you're doing well today. We really, do, we really do hope you're having a beautiful day. You know, yeah. we're very happy to see you. Uh, we really love to work with you, but we uh, really just want to understand what's going on. Are you okay, sir? Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Sir, is that okay? Do we need to call someone, uh, medical team for you? It's no surprise to me that these two tried to stop the recording, despite it being held in public, and the United States having a very robust freedom of the press. It's because this isn't only a religious event, and the people involved are at least somewhat politically savvy. This wasn't held in a mosque, or in the university's prayer room, or even in an auditorium if large numbers were the problem. It was on one of the campus lawns, with a loudspeaker broadcasting the prayer. This seems to me like it was as much a political statement as it was a religious one. And it's this kind of thing that outlines the problem of Islam in the West. It's one thing to have westernized Muslims, born and raised here, enjoying the religious and cultural practices that they determine are wanted in their lives. It's another thing entirely to import Muslims from the Middle East, who would want to see the political practices of their new home change to look more like their old home. The former is just fine. The latter is a direct attack on liberal democracy. And the worst part is, as the second group swells in size, the first group increasingly provides ideological cover for them, often unknowingly, until they ultimately get swallowed up. And progressives are happy to stroll right into the maw of death with them, because they are willfully blind about the distinction between both groups. That's why you get nonsense like LGBT against Islamophobia, despite many Muslims being entirely willing to toss these people off a rooftop for their sins. That's why there is a portion of Western Muslims radicalizing over time, using social justice rhetoric to justify Islam's repressive practices. And that's why radical lefties, ignorant about the two different types of Muslim, persist on calling Islamophobia racism and characterizing criticism of Islam as a hate crime. Caught in the middle of all this are the ex-Muslim refugees. These are people who fled from the religious oppression of various Islamic states to the West, hoping to start a new life. But when they get here, they find SJWs and globalist lefty governments openly embracing the barbarism that they risked their lives to escape from. And if they're really unlucky, they might even bump into the ISIS fighters that once bought and sold them as sex slaves, now living as refugees in their own right. Ich war schon 2014, 3. August 2014 im Gefangenschaft. Danach am 22.10.2014, ich bin schon äh, frei vom Gefangenschaft. Ich war drei Jahre in Deutschland und ich habe den Mann, der mich ver verkauft und so, im ersten Mann, der mich so verkauft und so. Und er hat mich gefragt, ob ich erschwert bin. Ich habe gesagt, nee, ich bin nicht Aschwab und ich kenne Aschwab nicht und ich kenne dich auch nicht. Wer bist du? Er hat mich gesagt, doch, du kennst mich schon und ich kenne dich auch schon. Ich weiß, seit wann bist du schon in Deutschland? Bist du schon in Deutschland? Ich habe gesagt, ich habe so viel Angst und ich habe schon gedacht, dass er ist. Und er hat mich, äh, mir gesagt, äh, ich weiß, dass 
Seit 2015 bist du schon in Deutschland und lebst du mit deiner Mutter und mit deinem Bruder. Und äh, er hat meine Adresse gegeben. Und er, hat, er weiß auf jeden Fall mein ganzes Leben. Und ich rede jetzt nicht nur für mich und über mich. Ich rede für alle Mädchen, die, die leben in Deutschland. Und viele Mädchen haben schon den Mann gesehen, der im Gefangenschau war. So, no, I am not interested in World Hijab Day. It's a holiday that was started by a Muslim in New York who has likely never experienced life in an Islamic state, and who is likely completely ignorant about the horrific symbology of the hijab as it pertains to oppressed women around the world. I am not interested in giving an inch to the normalization of Islam in the West, because I do not trust the barbaric political system attached to it. Europe's further along this track than Canada is, and they serve as the canary in the coal mine on this issue. I don't want Canadian kids having homework on their conversion to Islam, like in the UK. I don't want the friendly, try on the hijab attitude to shift to all women must wear headscarves in solidarity with Muslims, like in Austria. I don't want Muslim grooming gangs, like in basically every European country now. I don't want Canadian gay youths to be stabbed to death while begging for their lives, like in Iraq. And I don't want ex-Muslims, atheists, and other non-believers to face violence and abuse, like the world over. Social justice warriors and feminists rant and rave about The Handmaid's Tale in the West, and how those iconic robes and bonnets are symbols of a government that reduces women to property. But even as they dress up in those fictional symbols as protest, they turn a blind eye to their non-fiction counterpart, the hijab. It would seem like progressives are more worried about fantasy misogyny than actual misogyny. If that weren't the case, they'd be just as horrified at World Hijab Day as I am. <laughs> كنا نريد فعلا مخلصين ان احنا نتعاون مع الاخوان المسلمين على ان يسيروا في الطريق الصحيح والطريق السليم وقابلت المرشد العام للاخوان المسلمين وقعد وطلب مطالب طلب ايه اول حاجة قال لي يجب ان تقيم الحجاب في مصر وتخلي كل واحدة تمشي في الشارع تلبس طرح <تصفيق> كل واحدة تمشي <تصفيق> وانا قلت له يعني اذا الواحد قال هذا الكلام بيقولوا رجعنا الايام الحاكم بأمر الله اللي كان بيخلي الناس ما يمشوش بالنهار ويمشوا بالليل و أنا في رأيي أن كل واحد في بيته هو اللي ينفذ هذا الكلام فقال لي لا أنت باعتبارك الحاكم مسؤول قلت له يا أستاذ أنت ليك بنت في كلية الطب مش لابسة طرحة ولا حاجة ما لبستهاش طرحة ليه؟ ده كنت انت اذا كنت انت مش قادر تلبس اذا كنت انت مش قادر تلبس بنت واحدة اللي هي بنتك طرحة عايزنا ننزل البس عشرة مليون طرح في البلد نفسك <تصفيق>